Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Triforce Podcast. Good Thanks to be for back. Good, good to be back. Thanks very oh. much for inviting me. Hello. Back. Hello. And also Perian's here. <laughs> Hi, I'm hey, always what's there. Up? And also Perian's here. And like also. I'm just fucking hanging around. Makes me yeah, yeah. cute. You're the third man. What? I just I just order I, so is alphabet going on? No, it isn't, is it? Awkward. Maybe I should be introducing you second in the future. Anyway. Oh, I don't give a shit. Put me last. I'm happy Redo to do it. Redo it and do flax first this time. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, this is this is the one that's going out. All right. You're right. Uh, so so the we flooded the office this week because of this rain that came down. So it's did, it, heavy did it just rain, bust through the roof? Is that what happened? Well, you, guys are, you guys are up a couple of stories. I don't understand how your office floods. Like, I mean, my, my garage, for example, is uh, half under the ground, and I've never had... God forbid, I'm touching wood as well. I've never right. had any flooding issues. How are you guys having flooding issues when you're like three story, two, three it's stories The up? water comes from the sky. So they're the first ones hit. Yeah, right. but like what's collecting so much water? Like the ground obviously no, collects no, 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 a no, ton no, the, of water. The, if, the, if your roof has a funny shape to it or something, right. and it, it, it doesn't run off, it collects. You got a funny ass shaped roof over there, Lewis? It's a bucket. You got a bucket roof. So we've got a lorry reversing in the background, yeah, by you, the way. I'm sorry if there's activity <laughs> in my area. I live in London. Yeah. What am I going to do? I was do? just looking around my room thinking there was some alarm going no off. No flooding Eddie. in his area either. Yeah, it's judger. the mind your own business alarm, all right? That's what it is. <laughs> I, I, uh, it sounds like your houses have been properly constructed, unlike this one. Yeah. yeah I've, I've, said, I've said this before, but the office has. It's a listed building, right. so it can't have guttering on the outside. Listed for what? Listed as being <laughs> shit. Is that- yes. It's on the knock this building down list. Is what <laughs> it's it's a lot known. of things are yeah. fucking out. And so, yeah, it's got internal guttering, which, of course, is the worst idea ever. That's called wow. the stairwell, as it turns out. That's the internal yes, guttering is the stairwell. The dream. <laughs> internal guttering. Who thinks of these things? Yeah, Who yeah. Thinks e- of cheap, that? cheap people, idiots as well. But that sounds harder to do. Well, it all- it sounds much harder to do. All you need to do is, like, you know, f- like make the drain pipes kind of c- c- full, right? Yeah. But they, the, but the guttering is always half drain pipes, right? That's the yeah, idea yeah. of it. It's like it's like saves money, and it's also outside, so if it overflows, it doesn't matter. But they use the half guttering inside, <laughs> of course. And despite us reporting it for multiple years and it flooding the office for multiple years, uh, they still haven't replaced Geniuses. it. So that's, that's just an example of the cheapness of landlords. So how here's, much here's a quick question them. for you: Did this water did this water affect things like uh, computer equipment? Oh yeah, yeah. Really? That's, so you've lost computers as a result of this? Yeah. Well, I mean, we, luckily it happened during the day when we were all in, so we were so you were just responsive. sitting there browsing Reddit, doing the usual, and all of a sudden you felt some water below your feet start no, to I was, rise i was streaming computers started turning off and <laughs> sparks started, started flying started floating everywhere away, just floating away why am i in the kitchen now why it's am like, I floating? Uh, like winnie winnie the pooh and the big flood episode you, know, you remember when like piglets get stuck in a honey pot and and rabbits like stuck on an armchair and they're floating down the the river and stuff and winnie Not the familiar? pooh who has constructed an ark for one of every bear yeah uh floats away and Curses the sinners who have been left behind. Yeah, he discriminates against donkey, so <laughs> donkey, so everybody can get on there except for Eeyore. Which that's is why it. there's no donkeys these days. That's why oh, there's none. Yeah, well. Winnie the Pooh made sure. Well, guess I'm drowning again. <laughs> guess I'm fucked again. Extinction for Pooh me. Bear really fucked me in the ass this time. <laughs> He's on his boat eating his honey. Fuck you, Winnie the Pooh. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> honey bitch. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, shit. Oh, so, man. Um, so have you guys recovered from said flooding or not really? You guys still... Well, S- well P-Flax luckily missed it by a day. Oh, well, yeah. He I saw was Parry here. on Twitter covered in water and I was like, man, I left at the right time. Jeez. Yeah, he was here in like... Uh, you were here from... F- Wednesday Thursday? to Sunday. Wednesday to Wednesday. Sunday. Yeah. Man, we had a great week together. I really, I really, really enjoyed hanging out with you guys. Um, we, it was like, you know, when you come, like, we just, like, don't do anything. We just sit around and, like, sit in an airport. It's just wasted time. With p Flax, it was, like, action. Like, we were, like, we were dancing and <laughs> shouting and doing doing karaoke. Holy it was amazing. Crap. It was a full week uh, of, honestly, of excitement. We did a bunch of stuff, like... Uh... Like it was just a lot of fun, and uh, I got very drunk um, and had a, had some lovely food, and I hardly spent any time in my hotel, which to me is always a good sign of a trip. If I'm spending mm. a lot of time in my hotel because people are busy or or 
people find me too annoying and don't want to hang out with me. You think, well, what am I here for? I can be anywhere. I'm just in someone else's room yeah, right now. Yeah. That's what it, and it just kind of sucks. Uh, but this time, all about it, man. I was in the office most of the time, played a whole bunch of games, hanging out, going out for drinks, going out for lunch, yeah. going out for dinner. It was great. It was lovely. It's like 24-hour entertainment just because fun. someone someone you know is going to be doing something at some time of day. It was kind of like a relay race. You know, I don't know if you've been watching any of the... No, I do But the... Um, I but, have you know, I would. Thank you very much. I would much. get I P-Flex in the morning. I'd hand him over to bed in the afternoon. <laughs> and then ben would hand him over to, I don't know, Ravs and Ped for like dinner. Like a troublesome and then he'd, child. He'd, he'd uh, get handed over to Tom and uh, the pub Harry for the, am, for the, for the late night. I am merely the baton. That's, I'm just carrying me from person to person and, and I will bother them. You're like, look, lads, you there's a private WhatsApp group. Someone look after this bold idiot and you message each other. Oh, I'm fucking sick of him. It's been half an hour. Harry, come get him. Take him to the park. Give him a run around or something. Get get some, uh, give him some bubble gum and an ice cream and he'll be all right. That was my life there. Well, I nice. always want people when they come down to be entertained to be busy but there is never that much effort or thought put into anything as always with the ox it's always like you know fuck it we'll just wing it and see how it goes it just turned out luckily i think that that we had stuff to do and yeah. we wanted to do and people were around at the right time and i don't know it was, it was good we had a good week we played uh, lots of little world war Two games we played a couple of board games yeah um rolled some dice oh. shouted at the ceiling in frustration when they didn't go our way it was great it was, it was top fun it was great yeah so there should be plenty of content coming out of that as yeah. well we recorded a few little things nice um which which and also we recorded some a scrub dota game oh we did of all for things. the first time in we think five years have you guys uh, um, in fact i'm gonna look this up on my youtube channel real go quick on, go on, six, go on, have you guys ever thought of um like uh, recording some content like um, sort of like uh, like buy you buy an old house and and do it up and do like a time lapse or like you clean a car like outside and inside but do a time lapse because I've been watching a lot of those videos and like now I'm I'm into that Fuck, kind of they're stuff amazing recently, yeah, yeah, yeah so like I was did, wondering if seen... like you guys could do some as well so I can watch more. there's this there's this channel called like I don't know it's called like Mr Win Update or something right and there's two like. Thai or Malaysian guys who are just digging in like a in like a jungle uh -huh. and they dig out like they make this like Mayan looking like water park swimming pool complex. Wow. It's nuts. Um, I'll link you it after this, but it's nuts. It's like two guys with these tools that are they're like a, a, a you know a, a wallpaper scraper on a stick. Yeah. They use that to just carve out this hole in the jungle of like <laughs> which if someone stumbled on it, they think it was like some fucking ancient ruins, <laughs> which it may it may well be. You know, they just made it for a YouTube video, and now it's obviously all gone all horrible because they, I don't think it had any. They made like a really cool looking water park, but it, I don't think it had any drainage or any of the practical stuff that it needs, right? So it's probably just now a stagnant pool. But man, oh, those, those YouTube videos really get me. I just I just love them. They're man, so I weirdly... just I, I I I stumble across them from time to time because sometimes yeah. I'll like I'll be watching. Watching we something, talked about them. Um, and then I'll fall asleep, and then I'll wake up like an hour later or something, and some something random is on, and it's always like yeah. some somebody gardening or somebody doing up a house or somebody cleaning a car, like one of those I'm not three sure things. Sure, you'd you'd want to see me and P Flax, like I don't know, trying to mend a roof. No, or something, I don't want to do that. You know, with our shirts no, off. No, I mean, like, if you guys were, were experienced and knew what you were doing, I would want to watch for sure. But I wouldn't want to watch you blunder a well. It, it would be a time sure. lapse of like three hours of us like trying to figure out where the ladder should be, googling yeah. things, and then going phones. up and down the ladder. Yeah, we and they yeah. drive it to B and Q because we didn't have a hammer <laughs> or whatever. That would be the time lapse. Oh, you know, speaking of this, actually reminds me of uh, Clarkson's Farm, which. Uh, your, oh, no. uh, your recommendation i have been watching yeah now i have been really enjoying it right it this is, is what i said i know it's really, really bad funny i don't know why but I, I find it genuinely hilarious and the supporting cast are really interesting he is such you have done such a 180 on this i know i know facts. because I, honestly i try not <laughs> oh. to criticize things too much unless i've at least seen it um so he is absolutely insufferable most of the time and then occasionally you see a side of him where you think well maybe he's not too bad but then he does things you just think why why are you so stupid i mean also you realize now i mean i i, I hate to use the term content creator but yeah, yeah you but realize he, that he's he plays playing up, up to for, a role yeah of but then course. He, he also very specifically obviously doesn't think climate change is a thing 
doesn't really give a shit about stuff and he just kind of but then he does things like turn it around and tries to build a nature reserve but the way he does it is really cat candid and shit so it's just it, it, he's as infuriating as it's possible to be obviously that's part of the charm but oddly enough it's not charming i don't find him interesting those people that came to his shitty farm shop that just sold bad potatoes blew my mind all those fanboys coming out of the woodwork to come and meet clarkson um but like not building a car park you just think what are you doing i mean i don't know if they're doing it for content or if he's just actually that belligerently thick it's hard to know but it is genuinely an entertaining show <laughs> I, yeah i know I and fascinating I've, I've... i don't know anything about farming but i mean the way all the little tricks that they have for the lambing like if one of the lamb if one of the the the, the sheep has three yeah. and one has one you take one of the lambs you roll it in the afterbirth of the mother that you want to adopt that lamb and then you give it to her and trick her into thinking it's her lamb even though it's not does that uh, they only have two yeah. nipples yeah, right? yeah it works yes they so they can only teats. feed two sheep so you otherwise. need some onesies in and there. And they reject lambs that aren't theirs unless they smell right yeah, at birth. Because right, that's like, so what? that's the trick. It's just to get them to smell right at birth. At and birth. then yeah. this 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 sheep will adopt a lamb for life. Yeah. Well, actually, most animals sort of give up on their kids after yeah, yeah, they yeah, get they to do. a certain point, right? They're just there like, is fuck, obviously fuck a point. you. Now, you're now, right. now you're competing for the same resources and I don't like you anymore. Exactly. But so in order to stop the new lamb running back to its old mother, because they're not very bright, you know, they tie its legs together. And I was like, this is genius. This is absolute genius. And <laughs> then, Jesus it's Christ. not genius. Yeah, it no, is. That's it's, a, like, it's something. The whole it's thing something. sounds not very bright, actually. It's genius. <laughs> it's just and crazy. Then, uh, in order to castrate the, the lambs that are boys, so they don't start all having sex with each other as soon as possible, they put a rubber band around their bollocks. And they just, because the blood supply is not there, they just drop off after a couple of days. Fuck that, me, man. I was like, this is this is so... It's like a, a, a mad genius has concocted this stuff, but it's obviously incredibly old techniques. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this is incredible. It really, so it really was something. And the machines, so many machines. Oh my God, There's yeah. a machine for everything. And you've it's seen, generally- um, You've seen in the news recently that farmers, like people are breaking into farms to steal like uh, really valuable GPS equipment and stuff. Oh machines. yeah, I'm the, sure. Like, like you said, machines, but man, like there's, there's the, all of that stuff costs so much money. And, and now people are finally catching on to the fact that like, hey, hang on a second. These guys just leave these things laying right. in you know in in an open field and all they do is just like lock the door just yeah go. it's it's crazy and i mean that generally speaking the farmhouse is not like next to where the equipment is kept no of course not it's like so or miles not away. right next to yeah. so it's like having a large estate and someone busts in and steals a gps from your tractor so far so farmers get fucked again because not only do they have to pony up for all this expensive farming equipment now they're gonna have to have these like state-of-the-art security systems right. and cameras and shit to oh, guard so all of their expensive equipment and Fuck also me. the uh i mean i knew that the, the the weather was a big factor when it came to farming obviously it's going to be if you have a very wet season when you want to be planting that's no good if it's then bone dry you know and there's no water for the plants that's no good and everything but the thing is it's the timing issues it's like they have to plant it in this two-week period yeah or they yeah. are fucked so if something gets nicked, it's not like they can just say, oh, we'll get it back on insurance. Because that might mean they then can't plant that field. And that's going to cost them a fortune. Well, yeah, it's and, and it's not, they're not planting like five plants. This is like a, like a, an entire oh, yeah. field worth of stuff, like you said. Tens so of thousands. It has to be very organized. It has to be yeah. uh, planned out properly and stuff. It's amazing. Yeah, but they it's have a machine. A... If you have a, let's say he, he has a plastic pipe. He wants to run from one end of a field to the other. <laughs> I, I love how excited you are about I all love of it. this. There's a machine. Oh, you put this reel of plastic hose on the back of the machine. You put the end through this little spigoty thing. And then it's got this machine that digs a trench, pushes the pipe into it, and then closes the hole back over it. Yeah, I mean, so have you, you not go, seen Burr. how they harvest all these plants when in the harvesting season? Clearly There's, not. Oh my god, man! You you blow your mind. It's insane. Like uh, like you just you have to see these machines at work. They're they're nuts. It, it's um, incredible that they've been designed because they're so specific, right? You can't use them for anything else. Exactly. It's just for this one specific job. You know, like 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 sugar beets have to be harvested one particular way and like potatoes have to be harvested one particular way so there's like a machine for everything it's like it's so expensive it's insane like i guess that's why like you always hear 
saying like, oh, farmers, uh, they can't make any money. Like, oh, the corporation is buying up all these fields to plant corn and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, it's it, like it's impossible for them to keep up now. And oh, it's compete. unbelievable. Yeah. The challenges are unbelievable. Yeah. It's really bad. Yeah, it's uh, nice. And then also just the, the restrictions and stuff. Like, the, that's the thing is that like, he, he's one of these people who thinks health and safety is like a joke. Yeah. Um, which really pisses me off because it's super important to have that stuff. Like, any time you think, you, like, do you remember this was about 20 episodes ago? We were talking about all these disasters. I was talking about these disasters, and it was like somewhere in Indonesia or something, there was some ship, a ferry yeah. boat that was like massively overloaded. Now, in Clarkson's world, and people like him, that's fine. Just get on the boat. You can swim. And oh, yeah. The, He's the an entitled and privileged, uh, right. privileged individual. He doesn't have to, uh, to ever sort of um, compromise. It's never or... happened to him. Yeah, right. it's never but happened to him, therefore it, it, it hasn't happened to anybody. Yeah, but, but he yeah, has yeah. a very big voice. And what annoys me is that when someone like that has that platform and they're literally saying, fuck it, if you fall in the fire pit because we didn't do it properly, that's on you. Don't fall in fire. Ha ha ha. Yeah. It's just little things like that but like that really grinds my gears while I'm watching the show and kind of detracts from it. But honestly, learning about farming and seeing the improvements and seeing him learning what the fuck is going on. And honestly, the guy Caleb that works with them is fucking awesome. So yeah, it's, it's a it's a really good show. I actually do recommend it, which surprises me. A lot of people off the back of us talking about Clarkson recently have been asking like, yo, why, where does this hatred for Clarkson come from? Flax just explained it. If you're ever wondering, he's just ignorant. I, I get it. He's probably pretty funny as an entertainer or whatever sometimes or whatever. But if you've ever read anything that he's written or taken any of his views or, or, or anything, um, read about them outside of his persona, or maybe it's part of his persona, He's just an, uh, an ignorant asshole. Yeah, I mean, asshole. you can be funny and a bigoted, ignorant cunt. There's, there, those things are not, like, yeah. mutually exclusive. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I think you could present one front on your very highly edited TV show that's deliberately for, you know, for a comedy audience, and you could present another front elsewhere. You know, the, it's just be, just because, again, it's the, the idea of the internet. People see us being funny on the internet, and they think that's who we are. We're just I'm not, awesome. I'm not funny at all. <laughs> like I'm, no. uh, nobody likes me. Yeah, like I, you meet me in the street. Yeah. I'll just, you know, I'm just addicted. I'll just be like, no, I'm too famous. Get out of my <laughs> yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't piss on you if you were on fire. Like that's the point I'm at right now. Like in my life, you know, I'm too important in my own lunchtime to waste time there, talking there, to anybody. There is just there is a sliding scale there. I think some people are exactly like what they're like online and some people aren't. You know, I think that uh, if you catch me at a bad time of day, maybe I might be short with you. I hope I am not, but you know, I I'm I'm saying that you know, you, I think I think Clarkson is is a, a particular example of someone who is clearly unapologetic for his out of date views yeah. in a sense. I just think he you could sum him up as saying he he tells it like it is, yeah, which but, is like something that a lot of people say. Yeah. Oh, I just tell it like it is. But what you mean is you are you tell it like it is for you, <laughs> for you. <laughs> which is not like, realistic it. at all. And, yeah, uh, which is just yeah, it's completely. Yeah. Yeah. You tell it like it was, <laughs> yeah, or, or like you wish it was. I think. Yeah, but it, it's it's uh, yeah. He's just he's a very divisive figure. Uh, but oddly enough, I, I do quite enjoy the show. Also, that lad has a gut on him. My goodness, like the rest of him is fairly skinny. And then he's just got this orb, like classic well, he's middle old. age. Like he's, he's not that much older than me. He's in his 50s. Are you serious? Man, yeah. I thought he was like pushing 70. He is older than you. He's 60 something. I thought he was much older. I thought he was no, much older. No, I don't older. think he, he is. I think he mentioned that. I thought he was 56, like... but maybe he was lying. So he, all right, he's he's 61. He, he's only 16 years older than me. That's not long. That, that is. That could be me in 16 <laughs> that is, years. That is a long, uh, that's a lot of time, Flax. That Your body not, will dude. undergo some changes in the next 16 years, I promise. I'm telling you, 16 years is nothing. It'll be upon me in no time. Mm. Gravity pulls all the stuff down. Exactly. As well, you know, yeah. You know, that six pack will become that gut you know very just it just will. it will yeah There's i just no, i looked no at that and i it. thought christ that could be me like in a decade i'll just have the clocks and bulge i don't want that i don't want it please. well you're you're working hard on the old gym how's yeah. that going did you go to the gym when you were down here did you use the hotel i, I was going to but i was too hungover oh, i was no. too hungover so i, I did yeah we, it was a messy one on wednesday and thursday that's the trap 
That's the joke hotel gyms into. are this thing which I I mean, I always was like, oh, there's a gym. I might go in the gym. Of course, I don't think I've ever. No, been no in a of hotel course gym not. Ever. Yeah. I'm I'm like that with hotel pools. I'm always like, oh, I can't wait. Like, there's a pool. I'm just gonna go for a dip. I never do. No, no. I, I told I told my trainer I'd I'd gone down and and basically drunk my ass off for, for like five days, and he was like, well, let's get to work. And that was the Monday was astonishingly hard. Like I, I, bet, I thought yeah. I was gonna pass out, Jeez. but uh, then we were back on it. When Wednesday was fine, and I'm in on Friday, so yeah. I've been, uh, I've been watching this uh, really interesting documentary uh, called Philly DA. Uh, it's like an eight-part series about a, um, a guy who becomes the district attorney of Philadelphia. Oh, wow. Um, but he's, he's progressive, and uh, when he enters office, he promptly fires like uh, 30 um, attorneys from the office that have been there for like the longest time he just does like this big clear house and he's coming in saying stuff like uh why are we looking into people that are you know being pulled over with three grams of marijuana on them why are we um you know why are we doing pursuing like uh, cash bails because it's like uh, unfair against poor people um you know why are people still seeking the death penalty i, I don't think it's a good idea and stuff and um, so the whole series is just kind of like them following him around in this new, his newly elected position and everybody hating him basically because he's too different and, and wants to change things right. too much. And there's a lot of people that have been in the office for a long time. Who, yeah, you got all those alliances and stuff. To yeah, break yeah. Through. Well, like, and, oh and one God. one that he really struggles with is this, uh, is the, uh, f the, the, for, for, fraternity of police uh which is like kind of like a, a union uh right. for for police officers who hate him um and will just do anything <laughs> they can to to make him look bad uh to question his policies and stuff and uh and rally all of these uh police and ex-policemen uh their, a lot of their funding comes from retired policemen so like right. old, old dinosaurs who want things to stay the the same way they've does always been does it feel does it feel sort of gritty like the wire because it's like a documentary it's right? a it's documentary like an actual, it feels it's an documentary. Um, it doesn't feel gritty like the wire in that i mean there's a lot of like it, it there's there's lots of like different sort of threads in it you know like there's there's the the people that work there that are um you can tell they're just on their way out you know they're they're they're, they're they don't agree waiting with, for the pension with that thing. with what's happening and they're just oh being you mean they're gonna obstructive quit? and uh, they're either gonna get fired or or they just inevitably resign because they don't wow. like how things are going which is interesting, and then there's um there's a there's a bunch of like uh, cases because this is all from like 2017. So like he he's elected in 2017 for like what is it four years or whatever, um, and then he can seek re-election in 2021, which he he did this year. Um, but the the scope of the documentary is like 2017 to 2021, like his 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 first term, if you like, sort of thing. But yeah, it's super interesting. Like it, it's all it's all very. If you like like stuff about American justice and 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 whatnot, it's uh, it's really interesting. And again, he's 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 like a civil rights lawyer for like thirty years in the city, uh, and then just thought he's he's just had enough of dealing with this like antiquated DA's office, and just decided, well, I'm just going to try to become the DA, and then won. Wow. Yeah, but he won off the back of like uh, a lot of communities who who were sick of uh, of the death penalty um and especially in because in pennsylvania they have the death penalty but it's, really? it hasn't been acted upon since the 60s so there's people Why sitting on death, death row with no chance of ever being even executed but the problem is when they're sitting on death row uh, they have a right to appeal, which they do all the time. Yeah, yeah. And so the families of the victims and stuff are are dragged back to court constantly for these appeals that are always denied because they're already on death row or whatever. But it's also happening that like six or seven cases were were disproved by DNA. And so people that had been sitting on death row for years and years and years are then all of a sudden released because yeah, yeah. they were wrongly imprisoned in the you know what i mean it's just like it's the same old but it's super interesting uh, how 
convoluted their system is and like sometimes it feels just super broken i like i don't understand how any of it e- even even works half the time um there's a lot of focus on like the juvenile division in the in the in in the thing where uh, and again a, a point for his for him running was that they they don't want uh juveniles being put into placements because it just creates more problems you know like it, it's it's institutionalizing kids at a young age to then become worse Right. You know what I mean? Like it's separating them from their families. Uh, they end up being placed in these places all over the state that are far away. You know, like they, they sort of make the point at one point, they're like, you might as well just like send them to Canada or something. You know, like they're just so far away from home and everything that they know that it's just like, you know, it, it's it's no good sort of thing. So and what is it called? Philadelphia PA. It's just called D- DA. Philly DA. Yeah, Philly it's a, it's DA. a, it's you can get it on. Uh, it's all eight episodes are on uh, on on BBC Four on iPlayer. Oh, cool! It's I a it's, check that it's out. a Storyville documentary. It's really really. Oh, good. I love Storyville. Love yeah, yeah. Storyville. It's really really good. I, w- I was trying to watch one about about a fire in a Romanian nightclub, and it was so real in the first ten minutes. I had to stop watching it because they actually <laughs> showed footage of the fire breaking out and they're on stage and they have some fucking pyrotechnics display um and the fucking ceiling catches fire and the whole place goes up and you're just in the place like you're the camera shot is from inside the club while it's burning and i was like i'm done i can't stand this this is too real i am <laughs> out yeah it was horrible i know i bang on a lot about storyville but honestly their documentaries oh are it's they're incredible, incredible. they're so incredible. good yeah they're they're amongst the best for sure so if you like watching uh like uh documentaries and real life stuff i i highly recommend it but yeah this philly da um uh like mini series or whatever is is totally worth watching as well it's Groovy. really interesting do you reckon that because of the whole pandemic thing that a lot of shows that were cut or they had footage for and you know they were ready to go and then they decided to drop them that they went and rolled those out because they were like we can't make new content let's go and look at what we've got that we never used and make a show out of that how many shows you reckon have come around from that hmm hmm interesting question um, we have no as, answers as i'm browsing anime <laughs> <laughs> he is actually browsing anime look he, he can't even formulate one so, thought can you report that can you just can you just can you just repeat that again what's Sorry. this uh, death note season five repeat hang your on question. a second no Flex. i'm can not you gonna repeat, repeat the question? my question i'm not gonna repeat my question you, sh- I was you should pay out. attention i thought you were yeah. talking to sim yeah. you should pay attention to I, sim. I, I this it. is a three-person podcast you piece of shit taking a break. It's yeah. one hour a week and yeah. he can't pay attention. Can you, sorry, can you just repeat that question? No, do you know he what this reminds so me of? Now. He feels this, so bad. I, I was watching a TikTok the other day right. and it had that, it has like a speed it up rapid that goes, yamagabagoo, yamagabagoo, beat drop, like that. And it's like, they, you know, when people make the TikToks, when the kids make the TikToks, they put this music that's been on other TikToks in their TikTok because right. it's part, it's like a part of the meme. Yes. So it, as far as I can tell, this Yamagamagoo is not a full song. It's just this. And I think everybody's heard this. All these kids that are making this TikToks know this little tune. I'm sure people listening to the podcast now will know exactly what I'm talking about, even if some of you don't. What's it called? Yamagamagoo? <laughs> no, it's not. But if you <laughs> Google, look it up. If you Google Yamagamagoo, will you <laughs> it will get, bring you to that song. Right. Because when I hear a song and I don't, I, I don't, I can't use, uh, what's it called? I was, I was going to say Shanene, but it's not, it's Shazam. Shanene. When you use Shazam <laughs> to get the song, you know, you Shazam it and it yeah. listens to a bit of the song and says, this is the song. It can hear, listen to like one note and it knows sometimes it's crazy. So it's not a song. It's just like a, a little weird meme that someone made, but this song is everywhere. Millions of people have heard this. Millions and millions of people have heard this little Yamagamagoo. But the person that made it, I don't know who they were. They're not going to get any money from that. It's just this bit of music that they've dropped out there that people like. Is that the future of music that people just want to hear five to six Deville seconds? Santa. Shab- Shabab- Jabagoopa like Amiibo. <laughs> what, is that the name <laughs> of the song? <laughs> yeah, that's the name of the song. Is it a no. full song? Hey, listen. Shabadabagoopa like Amiibo. Flex, you, yeah, it's a full song. Well, it's like you, two minutes long. Maybe you two guys minutes. are aware. I, was, I mentioned this to some, uh, some, other, uh, some other people earlier in the week. I I am not overly aware of who uh, Billy I Eilish Eilish it's eyelash. I, eyelash eyelash yeah is and there was this there was like a show on it was like um uh, kind of like a documentary about her or whatever and the, and it was like um it was meant to be this like intimate sort of like you know uh, deep dive into into 
this person who I'd fucking twelve year old really heard thrilling. Of. Yeah, she's got so much to talk about. Well, but yeah, but they're like uh, she's like the like the, the 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 biggest artist right now, or like the, yeah. the highest highest grossing, highest selling something uh, artist. And I was just like, who? I I, I never <laughs> felt so out of touch in my life. Like I'd never even seen this person. I'd never even heard any of the songs. Nothing. Like I don't know how I've managed to insulate my dad garage so well against pop culture like uh, in, in this you one talk case constantly about how you basically live in your garage and never leave and don't listen to no anything. i know but still some stuff leaks in you know like uh, <laughs> like your yamagama goo sometimes and memes and whatever like the yogs offices there's some how leakage. did you find out about philly da who told you about this show because it's on pbs right which is it's, it's on, on netflix it's on, or iPlayer. Or really. it's, it's, on iPlayer. it's on uh oh it's on bbc it's iPlayer. on iPlayer right. because it's a uh, it's a uh, Storyville, so it's on. It's on uh, BBC okay. BBC Four. I just wondered if you had like some some recommender guy somewhere giving you. No, giving no, you the no. Hops I think my wife came across it. She was like, uh, you know, because because of the baby, like we're both at odd hours, just you know, browsing the internet at, like in the middle of the night or whatever. It is really alluring when you reach a certain age to watch that stuff. But but I have been watching the the normal common crap i watched a german horror movie on netflix which was number one on netflix for like a whole week and i was like okay i'm just gonna watch it just to see what it's about and it's like uh it's vampires on a plane right um Sold. it's like die hard except instead of bald um what's ever, what's his face why are you gonna it's... jump to that he's not an action <laughs> hero or a cop for you he's just bald bald guy instead of the what's his name you know bruce willis uh, the man is, that... is a legend <laughs> I know he's he is. Not I a, he doesn't name. do anything anymore, though, does he? Oh, he's in like, all kinds of shit now. Bruce, like, loads he's of crap. In stuff. Really? He's not good. Yeah. Not good, though. He's not a proper actor, really, is he? He's sort of, sort of a gormless. He's, because he's bold, Lewis. Because he's bold. He's a, he's a gormless this face. Is a, this is this Flax is just pushing his bald agenda again. You know, like the fraternity of bald guys. You know, he they they what defend I'm each is, other. The first. First yeah, we should fire all the bald guys out of the Philly DA. <laughs> that <laughs> bald office. guy. That bald guy. Scum. You guys are scum. <laughs> got rid of 31 bald prosecutors. Yeah, we, we, uh, we, we cleaned the house. We got rid of all the baldies. All the cue balls are out. <laughs> this is bullshit. <laughs> this is bullshit. Hey, um, well, speaking of, like, normal um, television, I've been watching uh, with my wife, which I never thought in a million years I would watch, and I kind of hate watch it as well, but, uh, and it, no, it's not a soap, it's, uh, it's um, Married at First Sight, Australia <laughs> edition, <laughs> oh, man. of all things, and it's wild, it's wild, I've never seen anything like it, it it's just, you know, these people are all in their 30s and stuff, and um, they've had to go on a show and marry somebody that they only just met as part of the show. And my and the entire time I'm thinking, I'm not surprised these people never got married. I'm not surprised these people don't have relationships. I'm not surprised that like these people are, are, are so lonely and stuff. And they've had to come on a show and get married to somebody like artificially or whatever. Because they're all uh, like crying man children. Like uh, the the women and the men uh, alike, they've. I don't think that they've matured past the age of twelve. In any yeah. case, they're all so stunted; it's unbelievable. Like they're just they're like the the deer deers in the headlights when it comes to like. So some of them have never had partners before. Some of them have never even had sex before, like or you know or any sort of sexual encounter before, and it's just like watching kids. But they're all in their thirties. It's Thank it's God. insane. And the These things people are that they out fight there in about. the world. I know, and they hold jobs and stuff too. They it could blows be flying the plane that you're on. You could I be know. on the plane. I and know. That's the Get them out of my cockpit. I don't want them in there. They're not a safe pair of hands. Oh, my oh it's crazy. It's it's a it real eye opener. A, it comes from a Danish series. So apparently, it started in Denmark. As, 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 I'm disappointed in Scandinavia. How do they? How do they find these? People I have. I are... guess they just present themselves willingly oh, yeah. um, to be on TV or whatever. Do they, but do, man, does, does the show so show them meeting for the first time? They don't seem at, like at first glance. You're kind of like, oh yeah, whatever. Like they just seem like normal people. But man, looks can be really deceiving, and in this show's case, uh, ultimately just uh, wildly deceiving because <laughs> these people are just not on the they, they just don't live on this planet i don't think or not in this oh. reality like they're they are so fucking stunted it's crazy like it's just 
it's interesting to watch, but like I, I, I like watching it because it's so hateful to watch. If that makes sense, you know, like uh, this notion of hate watching. That, that, oh man! You know, apparently people do this with streams and everything, but like, oh god, I've decided really? that this show is my my hate watching. There's a lot of there's a lot of TV shows like that that I see as well popping up on like Amazon stuff that is very similar in vibe i think one of them oh god what was it called it was something along the lines of of what you just mentioned oh, i can't fucking remember I'll, I'll dig it up hang on right. he's digging so what to mention it. i just want to say up. as well like i'm not i'm no one to judge somebody's maturity or whatever and i'm not i'm not talking about just general maturity or like you know somebody you know making a joke or whatever i'm talking about people uh, with like little to no life skills whatsoever in their yeah. 30s like that uh, that it's 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 incredible like it's just i i don't get it and the stuff like again that they fight about and like the differences that they have with each other and, and stuff is it blows my mind and also who the fuck did i marry at the, oh sorry no who the who the bleep did i marry is the show i've been keep getting recommended at, <laughs> yeah at the root of all this it's like what are your expectations for being married to somebody that you don't know at all you've known this person maybe for That's two ridiculous. minutes like the, your first encounter with them is you getting married to them like uh, it's pff, my my mind explodes every time i know yeah. it's i know ricky, it's tv ricky and lee Pello had always wanted the perfect family after marrying policeman jeff she felt like her dreams had come true right but when jeff becomes the main suspect in a serial <laughs> rapist case <laughs> oh my god, god the shocked ricky <laughs> lee stands by his oh. claims of innocence Oh my lord! <laughs> the, yeah, so that's the show. Who the fuck did who I the marry? Fuck did, who the bleep did I who marry? Who the bleep did I marry? Yeah. Who the cripes I mean, like, did I marry? Okay, but the, <laughs> like the lead up to who the cripes did I marry? Are these people that like met each other under some normal sor- circumstances, or is it like a like a, a hookup show? Like, is it like wh- like like a married at first sight sort of thing? Um, no, I think it's just it's just people who like you know they meet at work or uh, at school or whatever. Yeah, and then they and get uh, married. No. Anna Margarita Martinez, a Cuban exile living in Miami, was always taught the importance of finding a good Cuban husband. When she met Juan Pablo Roque, she thought she had found her perfect mate. But it turns out Juan Pablo had been using his marriage as a cover while he secretly worked as a Cuban government spy. (laughs) Oh my God! <laughs> well, Juan, how could you do fuck this? Did I marry? Who the who the bleep have I married? I, wa- I, I watched the thing the other day about um this girl. She was in Ibiza with a mate of hers. This was a BBC thing. Oh, as the well. drug smuggler, the Irish one. The drug, the drug, the mule drug thing. mule. Yeah. Now I, I joined this about three or four episodes in. Mrs. F caught me up. This is after I'd come back, I think, from Bristol. She was watching it. And she ends up in Peruvian prison. Yeah. And the funniest part was that they say to her, get on this plane with these drugs. Uh, You're just going to fly to... No, no, they tell her you're going to fly to Spain. Uh, Like, we're going to... They'll give you the drugs there and then you're going to fly back to Ibiza. She was like, okay. So she gets on this plane and when they announce where they're going, they're going to Lima in Peru. And she turns to the other passenger. She's like, where's where's Lima? Where's Peru? And they're like, it's in South America. And she she only notices after seeing the big line on the the map that shows like that huge line leading to where you're going. It's like, God knows how long that flight is, probably like a 12 hour flight. Yeah. Now, she's an adult. She's in the airport and she doesn't realize she's going to Peru and South America and therefore not Spain and doesn't walk away because she doesn't know where it is. How hard is it for an adult to board a flight, not realize where it's going? not know where Peru is and and still claim sympathy from the audience. I'm like, you're a fucking moron. You've been doing <laughs> cocaine for months in Ibiza. Yeah. Some guy you don't know urges you to fly and pick up drugs from another part of the world and then fly them back in. That's a drug mule. You're basically the frontline troops. They do not give a shit about you. They will even fill the flight with people with drugs and then tip off the police about a couple of them so that they're busy arresting and imprisoning you while the rest of the mules walk through customs. That's how that oh works. Oh my god. What That's the insane. fuck are you thinking? Yeah, but and the, the, the how whole shit after, you have to be to be- they, it was all the drugs were hidden in like crisp packets and stuff. <laughs> like it was it was like, It's just moronic. Yeah, I know. It wasn't like it, it wasn't like she was stashing them like in her ass or or any no. of like the clever ways of of muling drugs. It was just like 
bread bags. Yeah, <laughs> like literally shoved in a bag. <laughs> just drugs in a bag. Yeah. But what gets me is that upon realizing, like, how do you get, like, when you're in the airport, they're constantly telling you about your flight. Boarding to Lima. She just thought, Lima, that sounds weird. I thought I was going to Barcelona. Oh, well, must be another thing in Spain. Like, yeah, just fucking stupid. She's been living in Ibiza for months. She doesn't speak any Spanish. So when she winds up in this prison in Lima, which has a beauty salon in, by the way, that's how she wins <laughs> over the other women, is by being a beautician. They're like, ah, she's all right, actually. Uh, it was just nuts. But she had this kind of, I did it and I survived. And I was like, you're a fucking idiot. I wanted the ending to be, she's still in prison, where she, they let her out, but she can't find the door. That's what I thought the ending to the show was going to be. <laughs> Good God. They let her out and she tried to make it back to Ireland, but she ended up in Argentina <laughs> after a series oh, of it missed is flights, missed and wrong flights. I was just furious watching it. That was a hate watch. Because I was like, why are we celebrating her release? She's a fucking drug smuggler and an idiot. I just, oh, come on. Yeah, my wife uh, watched. I didn't watch it. I saw bits of it, but I didn't watch uh, the whole thing. But it, looked, it, was, it was funny. Yeah, it looked, uh, it looked interesting for sure. Man. I do respect the kind of, like, uh, madness of these people who uh, feel like, I've said this before, but I feel like the main characters in, our, you know, in the world, right, where they have these really weird bold lives and take risks and, and uh, Darren Brown's done some stuff about what makes people kind of do these stupid things that you almost like stuff that feels like you normally only see on TV like that you know like right. flying around the world getting like you could, but I think part of it you will get swept up in that right like people get swept away in the in fame or success or money or you know I don't know drugs particularly I suppose but it's, it's this yeah. kind of life that grabs you and makes you do stupid things. I wonder if a big part um, of it is if everyone else around you is doing something, that becomes the norm. And you almost need to step away and realize how mad what you're doing is. Because otherwise you just think, well, Tony's doing it and Steve's doing it and Beth's doing it, so what's the problem? Yeah, we're, we're all I've been listening it. to this, um, this podcast by Malcolm Gladwell where it's called Revisionist History and he talks about how, he look, basically he looks at events historical events or things that have happened through this idea that they were wrong in some way um or forgotten and we've kind of forgotten the lesson of them but there's this one thing about he talks about this idea of the threshold where um there's this sort of there was this very famous basketball player who threw underarm and he had this sort of very high um foul throw rate or whatever it is you know very very he was very good but 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 throwing underarm is seen as like a kind of a sissy thing to do yeah, right? yeah, yeah. and so he didn't really want to lose his reputation and also everyone around him was throwing the other way he even ended up changing back to throwing the other way and his you know his his score ratio massively fell away and he ended up you know really kind of losing his status as the best basketball player in the world and ever since then a few people have come along and been uh big underarm throwers anyway the whole the whole podcast about it. it's really yeah. interesting but it basically shows how you have this idea of like this 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 kind of like i guess it's like the, the mob mentality it's like enough if enough people around you are doing it that makes it okay yeah, yeah. and yeah. It, it, it happens in everything i think it's also called sentiment you know when you look at you know, certain things. There's certain things that are accepted in society that everyone does because everyone feels like everyone does them. And so even if it's not the best thing to do, everyone's doing it anyway. There's certain things that are not favoured, I guess, to do uh, in, in the same way. Yeah. Like, um, I guess, you know, Bitcoin is something where the sentiment wasn't very high at certain points. And then it was, you know, everyone saw it as this stupid thing. And then everyone saw it as this thing that they had to have. Um, and it's sort of, you know, the, the bandwagon effect, I guess it is, of this swinging wildly between one idea and another. And all, all it takes is enough, you know, certain people have low thresholds where they're very flexible and willing to change. Um, and I'm sure in basketball, a lot of people, you know, do want to win, but other people do want to keep their contracts with being cool and selling sneakers or whatever. Yeah, you know? yeah you're not going to sell want... many shoes if you're an underarm thrower. Like the poster is you like chucking it up in the air like a kid. <laughs> You'd be like, this guy's lame. He's not going to sell any sneakers. Exactly. So I, I think that, you know, it is, I think it is interesting how stuff like that, like possibly some answer to genuinely being better at a sport uh, is is hidden away for the sake mm. of coolness and how you look and your your 
the branding that comes around your life. Yeah, you know? I guess also there's a, a the mentality of not looking like a tit. Because if he throws like that and misses, everyone in their mind is thinking, well, of course he's missed, he's throwing like that. Even if it's more effective, it's still going to miss sometimes. So then that's going to negatively reinforce like your mentality is going to be, oh, maybe maybe this is the problem. You know, it's sort of, if you miss attempting something that statistically is better, people's, what is that? Uh, I can't remember the term. Confirmation bias, right? So yeah. if, if you're throwing underarm like that and you miss a crucial point, the emphasis and all the media will be about why is why are they letting this idiot throw this way? Even if it's worked the other ninety nine times, the one crucial one he misses is the one everybody will notice, right? I think it's this is part of the reason why it's hard for change to happen because it's easier for people to just conform, <coughs> right? Oh, in, yeah. in every walk of life, from the design of like roads or, or, or like everyone apparently apparently open offices is the cool thing and trendy that everyone has. You know, we have one, but actually. All the evidence points to the fact that people work better, you know, in s smaller areas, which is possibly, you know, why people work from home has actually not, you know, changed the productivity of these 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 operations at all. So in fact, distracted it's better in the big office. Um, and so, like, the, but but it's kind of if you break from that norm, you're the outsider, yeah. and it's easy to not rock. It's easy just to, to not rock the boat and just just go with the flow. I mean, wouldn't it be and... nice if everyone had? I've always wanted. A, a job where I had a little office of my own and people have to like and open the door and come in and I've got like a view of Central Park and stuff. That would be great. My own little office, come in, you know, like that. And I have what? a secretary and stuff like that. What? That so would be what, great. What is this dream vision you have? What do you do? What do you mean? You've got an office in cent overlooking Central Park. Yeah. You're a big I've got shot. a secretary. It's a corner office, obviously. You, yeah. I think, I mean, I'm just getting Lex Luthor vibes right now. Lex Luthor doesn't work in an office building. He has a lair. Yeah, that's it. He well, has no. like a... What do you mean he's not like a dragon? I mean, he's not Steve Jobs. Like he doesn't He's need... hiding in plain sight. He doesn't have an he office. He doesn't have an office. He doesn't need a front. He has a suit and a fancy office. He's a crime he boss. Just has, he, like yeah, a... he has like one office, but it's not. He doesn't He's the have CEO like. Of Lex he doesn't Corp. have a call center and like he doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't have like all these people like data inputting all around him and stuff. He just has like. Yeah, he a does. Room, he has a large like laboratory a room lab with a big mahogany area. desk, and yeah. uh, that's about it. You know, like and no, a couple of tape like machines. No, he's like an evil Iron Man. He's like an evil Tony This Stark. must be he's some new the... reinvention. I, I think i smell hold on what's that i smell i smell snyder has this got snyder on it <laughs> i think it well, has it's probably more it's probably only about 30 years old so yeah this revisioning of lex i don't think he's like an underworld mob boss he's kind of this in plain sight ceo but i'm telling you evil, evil he's billionaire, got a layer, isn't he? dude i'm guaranteed he's it. like um he's like a uh, elon it's like a, a bad Elon. <laughs> or, Elon. Or a good Elon. <laughs> Elon. Like, oh my god. Yeah. Oh, by the way, um I, I've written I've written a small thing. This is uh, do you guys do yoga? No. I, okay. I, I used right. to do a lot of yoga. I've I'm gonna start doing it again. Right. So Mrs. F does yoga. A lot of people when they do yoga will do it with a video or or a, like they'll have on their phone like a video showing you the moves. But she's been doing it so long now that all she needs is like the direction audio cue so you just have like a tape or a podcast or like a recording of someone telling you what moves to do and you know to do it and it's like this is your flow and it's almost like a an aid memoir really so that she knows the names of all the moves and all the rest of it okay but as a non-yoga doer this this is what it sounds like to me i love it okay? this is like a poem okay okay i'm really excited all right i'm gonna i have to come a little closer to the mic and and, and speak softly because that's how they do it let, let me know if this sounds right does this sound like a yoga tape? Yes, kind okay. of, yeah. All right, this is how it would go. <laughs> Left knee down, tremble lifting now into tabletop. Three fingers joining and relax. Lunchtime appointment, then pleasantries. <laughs> Bring that ankle forward to your rear knee upward in 17. Dog who can talk French, gently rolling over into root dog who can't talk French. <laughs> now. Relax those kidneys, bring that shoulder all the way back until it gently touches your anus. Downward, <laughs> downward hog weasel, thrust those eyeballs forward into shocked pedestrians. I love a downward hog weasel. <laughs> oh man. Long, long hot summer of passion, really driving your third and fourth toes into your left hand. Don't let your hair relax too much as we soar tremulously into jealous boss. New Year's honors, bending down now into coward's rebuke. 
and shuffling awkwardly into letter from Granny. Shanene. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it sounds like. That's what it sounds that like. That's exactly oh, what it sounds like. Man. Oh my god. It's like um it's, it's just like a gibberish. mom who hears oh, the, the her, her son uh play a dota and she doesn't understand any of this. Right, stuff. it's just it's just absolute gibberish. And she seems to know what it all means. So it's like why do you speak this strange alien language? And what do all these moves mean? And Spirit run <laughs> top. No wards. Oh, <laughs> Eyes from the side shop. Oh, he's at the bounty ward. Black it's hole. Just, uh, yes. <laughs> Global silence. You're like, what is all this? Oh, man. That's I know. Yeah, it's just, it doesn't mean anything to... To, it, oh, I love it. I, that is that was something. That was a thing of beauty. That was beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. I hope you will feel oh, that, very relaxed. That, that, <laughs> like, like I, I, I reach I, your elbow round to touch your anus. <laughs> that is such a. That is such a perfect. Just gonna do it. Can I move. just gonna once we're done here, I'm going inside and I'm just gonna do some downward hog weasels like all <laughs> yeah. afternoon. Can't wait. But I, I've walked in on Mrs. F before and I'm like, you're right, and she's like, I'm, sh- I'm in shavasana. I was like, oh, you were right. And that, but that means like you're relaxing at the end. I think you just kind of chill. So I, I've like she's just lying there on the floor, and I'm like she's like. See, Shavasana. recently I would take that as like, oh shit, I gotta call the maternity. Unit. <laughs> right? Jesus, yeah, exactly. I was like, what do you mean, Shavasana? Is it, are you in pain? Is your back out? What is it? Yeah, it's like, the it's the one where you're lying on your back with your arms out and just chilling. It looks like the, it's, I think it's called corpse pose. You gotta um, you gotta actually. put some of those that that yoga stuff into that TikTok rap. Flex. That's your next uh, <laughs> challenge, you know. Instead of the yabba dabba doos, you got to get like uh, yeah, you got to get some of your yoga. You got to get your yoga poses in there as well. Be really good. You just like oh, some fast shit. yoga, fast yoga. Yeah. That doesn't sound very yogic, does it? No, fast it yoga. A lot yeah. of it is just lying down. It goes against all the principles of of yoga, really. Yeah. Here you go. It's twenty twenty one. You can do whatever you like. Yeah, I might get back into it. Actually, I've I've been meaning to because I'm work. I've got the Jeremy Clarkson gut um, growing. Yeah. Nah, and you're I'm not. You look grand. I saw you the other day. You need to. Well, thanks, the, Pete, thanks. The barnet needs to go, and the and the clobber. But if you've that, ever you read the uh, the Mister Men <laughs> books uh, before, um, yeah, look oh, for, look fuck. for the book uh, Mister Skinny. Um, he goes <laughs> yeah. he goes off and he has to he has to um, live with Mister <laughs> Skinny. Goes to India. Yeah, no, he tries to he tries to make <laughs> That's gains. What I am at the moment. He tries to make gains, so he decides he's going to live with Mister Greedy for a couple of months. And then at the end of it, he's still Mister Skinny, but it just looks like he's got a baseball in his stomach, like he's got this little <laughs> tiny pot belly. That's what I imagine. Lewis looks like right now. Yeah, it's, that is exactly what's happened. Yeah. Oh man. Oh shit. Yeah, you've got to you've got to look and you're adhering to it. I admire it. Yeah. But uh, it's every it's every day, man. I, I thought it was an occasional thing. Like you've committed to this. Do you to have the you style. have you purchased a samurai sword to display in your office? Yeah, I noticed. Not, yeah, Lewis has been. So much, he's got um, the man bun. He's been wearing a lot of kimonos and stuff. He just needs some samurai swords, a couple just, wall yeah. scrolls, maybe some anime pillows and stuff, and the look is complete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, well. I. Uh, yeah. Thanks, you guys. Oh no. Uh, I, I like. It does seem. <laughs> can always, tr- hey, can no always rely on your support. <laughs> no problem. I don't. It gives me a good. It, it's relaxed. It relaxes my mind. It's, being... it's nice. In very loose fitting clothing. Right. I, yeah. I know it's That's nice because of the the endless stream of pictures on the Yogs Instagram of you <laughs> model posing. It's re- yeah. it's, it refreshes it my nice. day. I like yeah. to see it's, it. I like there's Lulu weird. doing his thing. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad I tickle you. It's nice. Yeah. Uh, Oh, that's so nice. Thank you. It's nice to hear. Yeah. Um. Oh, well, I had a I had a very positive week. I saw Simon for the first time in in six weeks, and yeah. we recorded. How is he? A, pe- a peculiar portion. He's he's actually fine. He weirdly he's been because he's been streaming so much, um, playing Final Fantasy and all sorts of other games with with folks. He's actually been, I think, not 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 happy, but obviously <laughs> ha- better than um, you know, because I think it was initially in the lockdown, it was quite lonely for him. Oh yeah, because he limited sort of. He felt like he was a bit more vulnerable, so he wasn't going out at all, kind of thing. Um, but no, I think through streaming and other things, he's he's actually socialising and doing more fun stuff than he's he's had before actually so he's quite positive Good. and we had a nice time in um talking to him like he's some sort of talking about him like he's some sort of uh <laughs> patient i always imagine like, that they just wheel him in like hannibal lecter style on the, on the dolly it's like here he is he's ready for content <laughs> Man, poor guy. Ah, uh, 
shit, though. Uh, so it was good, though. We uh, we we did a peculiar portions, which will be a podcast. We're actually sort of re re engaging peculiar portions to be more of a podcast now. All oh, right, okay. Um, which will be part of our pickaxe network. Of, oh, yeah. of good podcasts. <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah, that's gonna uh, be good. Just, that will uh, be good. Get my shoehorn out there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Along with Hat Chat oh. and Pitch Please, which you could also listen to, and I recommend greatly. There will be other podcasts. And we've all been on Pitch Please, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, right? yeah. Oh, yeah. We might get Spiff to do a podcast. I'm interested to do a, doing a little podcast. Hey, with Spiff, I saw Spiff. Cool uh, he was in Jersey. Uh, for, I know. Uh, yeah, he sent me a went, picture of you two. Yeah, I went to see him in, um, in Mango the, for just I uh, met them for a coffee quickly because. Because we're still like in sort of baby lockdown, but uh, it was good to see them. I haven't seen well. The last person I saw was uh, was you uh, when you were over. So it's it's always fun when people come over here, right? Because it's yeah. Such are a they small thinking place. of getting married in Jersey or something? Yeah, eventually, what, what, I think they yeah. are. Yeah, I think they're still looking at venues and stuff like that. Yeah, I think the tax is always an. Uh, <laughs> Spiff's always looking for an, an exploit. exploit. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> a, a he got his he got his channel back. Thank goodness. I saw yeah, his video yeah. About the, that. Uh, My his God. Went he down. got he got exploited, which is yeah. uh, But a few people did. It's so weird if you watch it. Like the guy ends up asking him for a job and all this kind of stuff and then there's this other guy is it jim sterling or jim browning i always forget jim browning, jim browning right. or something like that so he yeah. got got and he's a guy that catches scammers and the guy told him he'd made like millions off this but then also asked him for a hundred bucks for his channel back he's like what are you talking about dude so it's, it's really <laughs> really strange oh, but uh, yeah it's just this weird side of the internet where these people are out there but the dude that did the scam was just like really smart enough to do it because it's ingenious but then yeah it's a really it's a, when it's he a chatted to him it's something to do with like moving your channel over to a, another email or something and it and it just it deletes the channel yeah. or something doesn't it but it's really it weird it was really coincidental because it caught the gym guy who i've already forgot if it's browning or still i'm just gonna stick with browning right? sure um, go for it. it it caught him out because it sounds like a yoga pose it doesn't does. it into gym browning now and then relaxing into <laughs> spiff uh, uh, relax <laughs> with uh, with a one times hog weasel downward. Because <laughs> oh. he uh, he had recently changed phones. Jim had, right. so he thought okay. that this was linked to that because it's all about AdSense accounts and everything. So he thought, oh, it must have been when I changed phones, and so it just coincidentally he it was bang on cue. So just crazy, man. Just yeah, it, it's nuts. amazing. You got to be so fucking careful. We we, so we, we had our channel deleted that one time because someone reported me for being twelve years old. Yeah, <laughs> so I remember oh my God. that. Yeah, and they sent me that incredibly condescending email saying maybe you can come back when you're older. Kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, maybe that's why Lewis has been posing so much recently with this new fashion and look at me an adult like that. yeah exactly there's no possible way i'm 12 years old look at me everybody <laughs> don't delete my channel please uh no well the world of youtube and that anyway I, 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 there's some interesting stuff in the works um yeah so hopefully there'll be some some good stuff to show off in future yeah some good podcasts to listen to i'm recommending people outside the network today go listen to malcolm gladwell i recommend his podcast very interesting mm. very good very interesting all right well that's that's us done for the day thank you uh there's new episodes every wednesday on spotify and uh we're, we're back triforce is is back with a that's right baby and, yeah, you we'll heard see, it here first we'll see you next time everybody bye, bye. 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 bye.